Good morning, friends. It's great to see you again. Welcome back for Midweek Morning Encouragement. I'm John Tracy from Keystone Bible Church, and I'm eager to read a short passage from Luke 8 for you this morning. But before I do that, let me just share a little bit of the context of what's happening in that chapter. Um, we're going to read in Luke 8 about a woman who had a medical condition. Uh, the Bible says that she had a bleeding issue, and evidently no doctor had been able to stop it. And we have to understand that in that culture, her condition would have been a very, very shameful thing for her. She would have been considered ceremonially unclean. And since the bleeding hadn't stopped for some time, she would have perpetually been in this condition of being viewed as unapproachable. You know, she probably missed out on most of her family reunions and, you know, for sure the religious celebrations and a, and a lot of cultural events. She was isolated and alone, living as an outsider and an outcast. And Luke 8 says that this had been her condition for 12 long years. But one day, Jesus walks through her area, and he's in the midst of a big old crowd. He was actually on his way to heal somebody else, um, a, a young 12-year-old girl who was so sick that she was literally dying in her bed. And listen to the story. Luke 8, 40 says, Now when Jesus returned, the crowd welcomed him, for they were all waiting for him. And there came a man named Jairus, who was a ruler of the synagogue, and falling at Jesus' feet, he implored him to come to his house, for he had, a, he had an only daughter about 12 years of age, and she was dying. As Jesus went, the people passed around him, and there was a woman who had a discharge of blood for 12 years. And though she had spent all her living on physicians, she could not be healed by anyone. She came up behind him and touched the fringe of his garment, and immediately her discharge of blood ceased. And Jesus said, Who was it that touched me? When all denied it, Peter said, Master, the crowds surround you and are pressing in on you. But Jesus said, Someone touched me, for I perceive that power has gone out from me. And when the woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling and falling down before him, declared in the presence of all the people why she had touched him and how she had been immediately healed. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. I mean, there's certainly a lot going on there in that chapter that we could talk about, but I just want you to think about one aspect of this, you know, that, that idea of 12 years for both of these individuals. Jesus sovereignly knew 12 years prior exactly when that illness would strike that little girl, and he simultane simultaneously knew when th that this bleeding woman would carry her physical malady for the exact same time span of 12 years. And I just love it that right as he's in, you know, in the middle of traveling to the young girl's home, to deal with her 12-year-old problem, he also had eyes to see this other woman who also had a 12-year-old problem. And I have to believe that if, if you and I had been there on that day, surely we would have seen his choice to pause and address the bleeding lady as a distraction, you know, a deterrent from the, from the pressing issue at hand, like this important ministry endeavor. I mean, think about the girl's dad, Jairus. He, he, he loves his little girl so much and longed to, to see her healed before she died. Jesus definitely had a heart to help her. He was on his way there, but he also paused in the midst of the crowd and the pressures and you know, even that important ministry endeavor because he saw another lady who was also hurting and who was also reaching out for his help by faith. And I just love what that tells us about the heart of Jesus. And I wanna to say to you today that he sees you too. God sees your pain. He, he knows the exact ways in which you're hurting. He's never too busy or too preoccupied with other things to see and understand the specific needs of your life. That's God's heart for anyone who comes to him in faith in the midst of their hardship and suffering. And of course, you know, as God's people, we know ultimately our healing will be when our souls leave our bodies and we wake up in the presence of God in a, in a place where there will be no more tears and no more suffering at all. And we long for that day, don't we? But until then, we can also know that Jesus sees us right now as his sons and daughters, and he is acutely aware of the, the kinds of specific suffering that you and I are facing today. And just like the people in this, this story, he has compassion and empathy for us. It reminds me of what Hagar said about God in Genesis 16, three, when she called him El Roy, the God who sees me, the God who looks after me. See, that's who he is for you today too. He sees you, he, he looks after you, he knows you and he moves toward you with compassion in your specific time of need. So, child of God, turn your eyes toward him today in faith. Press through the crowd and the busyness and the, the distractions and reach out to your savior by faith, believing that he has not left you alone. He sees you in that place of need 
and he has a heart of compassion to work intentionally for your ultimate good. Thanks for tuning in this morning for Midweek Morning Encouragement. If you'd like to receive these Wednesday devotionals from Keystone Bible Church by text message every single week, then just text MME to the number that you see on the screen, and we'll make sure that we send those to you every single Wednesday morning. I hope this has been helpful. I hope you have a great day today, and I look forward to seeing you again very soon. God bless. Thank you.